All you have to do is close your eyes and listen. Welcome to episode 20 of TSGG Chat. I'm your host, Kevin Bork. We've got a great show this week. We've got some news. we got our feature on Shadow of the Tomb Raider. We're going to be talking about some of our favorite heroines in gaming. And don't forget, this is our celebration event, and we will be taking your questions. So, But first, head over to tsgg.online and sign up for our weekly newsletter. It's completely free and it comes with a welcome gift for becoming a member. Also follow us on Twitter at the GG and watch our YouTube videos. When you do, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. That is youtube.com slash the society. We would also like you to consider going over to patreon.com slash TSGG to see the many subscription levels that we offer. For only $1 a month, you get early access to almost everything that we do on all of the services like Apple Podcasts, Stitcher Radio, Google Play Music, YouTube, Spotify, and others. Why wait longer when it's only a buck? Now let's meet the panel so we can start the show. This week, we've got the partners, Jake, Brett, and Brennan. Welcome, everybody. Great to be back. I'm here. Hey, everyone. <laughs> and I didn't get called first. I apologize. Hurts. Pain. Real pain. I hurts. Fast. Hurts. 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 Okay, so what are we talking about today, Kev? Well, he just went over all that, oh, so one second listening. ago. <laughs> so, uh, Welcome anyway, back what are we to the starting show. with Welcome was clearly my uh, my intention there. So we want to start with some... a special <laughs> place in hell for you? I'm just letting you know right now. You want to start the with some worst. news, or... Yeah, let's go over the news. Okay, so um, we have really, really sad news this week, guys. Um, Final Fantasy composer Nobuo Uematsu has stopped all work due to health problems. This article comes from IGN. The legendary composer of most of the music from the Final Fantasy series, Nobu Uematsu, is stepping down from work due to health issues. On his blog, Uematsu says that he is taking the rest of the year off to recover properly from an unnamed disease and is hopeful he will make a full recovery. Uematsu joined Square in 1985, where he composed the music to the majority of Final Fantasy titles, Chrono Trigger, Lost Odyssey, and Blue Dragon, alongside a wealth of others. He left Square in 2004 to form his own production studio, but continues to work for the company on a freelance basis, and he is also reportedly working on the music for the Final Fantasy VII remake. And uh, not too long ago, they did a 20 years of Final Fantasy soundtracks, they also do, um, they do those shows live. Yep, they went on tour. Present on tour, yeah. So our best wishes to one of the most legendary composers of video game music. We want you to fully recover, and hopefully it's sooner rather than later. Absolutely. Get well, sir. Any other thoughts on Nobuo before we move on, guys? No. Uh, you did really well with his name. I'm super impressed with that. And, uh, he was one of my I favorites. I just hope he gets well. Literally yeah. one of mine, too. He's... It's the best music in gaming. Very, Final very Fantasy, so. big inspiration for myself. So it's very sad to see that. Oh, I guarantee for most of the gaming community, when it comes to music, he was one of the biggest, biggest Even people you want to aspire to. Even if you don't realize it, you realize yeah. that Final Fantasy's music is just next tier. Like It's its own character. Yeah. Uh, up next, this also comes from IGN, Rockstar reveals Red Dead Online. This... They announced that the Red Dead Redemption 2's multiplayer component will be called Red Dead Online. Oh, is that like GTA and it's, Online? Yes, oh, and it's going to launch <laughs> sometime in November. Super unexpected. Oh, after so it doesn't come with the, the release game. of the game. No, but it's just like they did with GTA Online. Interesting. So they had a, IGN had a exclusive Q&A with the development team, and uh, they said that they're going to take 
elements of the original Red Dead Redemption's multiplayer much further and combine that with everything that they've learned in the years since then with their favorite elements from Grand Theft Auto Online and create this mode out of all of it. We're going to rob so many banks. Uh, Stagecoaches actually are going to be our special market boys. There we go. That's all us. That's not a bad idea. We're just going to take over the town. The initial launch period is going to be considered a public beta. And they That's feel awesome. that Grand Theft Auto Online really That's only found right its now. feet creatively, creatively with heists. Their aim this time is to get there a bit quicker because GTA Online was Took a while slow. Yeah. Yep. But it's still going to be responsive to what people enjoy playing and evolve as they go. Rockstar's Anyone always been really good about that. So listen, yeah, to no their surprise. Base, it's always been something they've done. True. Anyone who purchases Red Dead Redemption 2 will get access to Red Dead Online. And they had a full press release after, which they said that the... uh, Today we're excited to announce Red Dead Online, a new online connected experience set against the backdrop of Red Dead Redemption 2's enormous open world. Red Dead Online is an evolutionary... Is, is an evolution of the classic multiplayer experience in the original Red Dead Redemption, blending narrative and competitive and cooperative gameplay in fun new ways. Using the gameplay of the upcoming Red Dead Redemption 2 as the foundation, Red Dead Online will be ready to be explored alone or with friends, and will also feature constant updates and adjustments to grow and evolve this experience for all players. It will be in November, initially as a public beta, no date yet. Can't wait. It's going to be awesome. I'm going to spend so much money on microtransactions. <laughs> I can already feel it. Oh. <laughs> I never got into GTA online, month. but oh, man, I love Red Dead. You excited for the online? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's how I if feel we can about really just rob so. stagecoaches and take over a town and just murder everyone who comes there, yeah, that's huge. Plus all the different events and stuff that are going to be happening. So. Oh, God, people. I can't wait for a stage yeah. coach. just grief people. Just lasso uh, them and drag them behind us. One thing they did say that wasn't in this article was that they are going to continue support for GTA Online. Mm-hmm. And they said that... Oh, go ahead. Uh, no, I just... You got something? I'll, oh, okay. I'll just make a note after. Uh, they said that they're going to continue support for GTA Online alongside of this. Mm-hmm. And they are going to have more content pack releases and they're going to try to alternate releases so you'll get one for gta and then you'll get one for red dead and they they said during the holidays and stuff like that there's really nothing they can do because they'll have to release for both but they're going to try to not release against the their own time, game right, yeah. right because one of the question was well now that you're going red dead are you killing gta online and they're like no we're just going to try to off balance so that they're not competing against one another. Right. Naturally, uh, so that, you don't uh, want to compete against one Nothing game. to do with this, but uh, Bethesda actually announced they're going to support Fallout 76 forever. Just forever. 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 We'll hold them to Just it. Just new content. Yep. That's, well, it may not always bold, be new content, but the servers claim. will always be open for Fallout 76. And that's coming from Bethesda, who are usually ridiculous and over the top, so I see that's top. Server will be closed that's in how 10 he years. Is. That's ten days. <laughs> <laughs> said ten years. I said ten years, oh. but <laughs> ten days. Ten days. That'd be Oof. hilarious. Now, uh, I think that'd be when... so sad. What do you mean, hilarious? <laughs> that'd be, yeah, it'd be so sad. That'd be sad. Seventy-six is gonna be great. Still hilarious. Though. Still ready to see what Starfield is. <laughs> Moving on <laughs> in the weird news. jump, but anybody, right. dude. When I think of Beth- Bethesda, I'm thinking Starfield. I need more of that. Really? Over Elder Scrolls 6. I know what Elder Scrolls is. Just give it to me. <laughs> Do you? I don't know what Starfield is. I don't Correct. think we know what this next Elder Scrolls is. It's Elder when Scrolls. When Todd has come out and said that the current gen just can't handle what they want to do, I don't think we know. Yeah, he means he knows us. the concept know, of what Elder yeah, Scrolls is going yeah, to right. be. Right. I don't know. Starfield, you have no idea. What Starfield it's is. It's space Elder Scrolls. That's it. No, That's what it's you know. not that. We don't know that. We know it's space. We've seen a satellite. Uh, literally and a satellite Earth. for 42 seconds, roughly. Right. That's it. It's a lot of seconds. It was 42 beautiful seconds. I was going to say it was really pretty. Prettiest space ever. 
Okay, moving on. Thanks for that <laughs> input there, Jacob. Uh, up next, also from IGN, Switch owners can now play their games on more than one console. Thanks to the release of version 6.0, Switch owners now have the ability to play their downloaded games and content on a second console. The functionality works by having users designate primary and non-primary consoles through their Nintendo account. If a Switch owner is without, without their own console but has access to someone else's, it's possible to log into their Nintendo account on this non-primary console and play all of their digital game content on it. The catch is that users will have to maintain an internet connection while playing their own content on any non-primary console. If the user loses their internet connection, then the game will pause after a certain amount of time. The player can resume where their game was paused once a connection is reestablished. Anything being played on a non-primary console will also pause if the associated Nintendo account is used to access downloadable software on any other Switch console. Right. Additionally, users are only able to play their own downloads, so switching between playing the content of a primary and non-primary on the same console will require signing out of the primary user's account and into the non-primary user's. Non-primary users, however, can still access all of the primary users' content and can continue so adding to their sharing. own content library. Yeah, which is really cool. Each Switch owner can only designate one console as primary. Yeah, so it's, yeah. it's game sharing. Yep, gotcha. That's very cool because uh, well, it's super cool. It's well, one of the things with the Switch as well is the memory space, which is the only complaint that's ever been really lodged about it. Is about one gig. It's tiny. It's just they sell a memory card basically and this will help them with that because more people are going to buy digitally now and it'll help their their sales for the uh, expanded yeah. memory mm-hmm. probably should. plus they launched the nintendo switch online service so the, right. they have the cloud saves and they got the nes classics and stuff like that right. so yeah it's all gonna it's all coming together now for nintendo which mm-hmm. is very nice because up until now it's just been really a on-the-go console with not much going on back there also, they, uh, the Super Smash Switch and the Pokemon Switch that they announced have both sold out um, on Amazon for pre-orders. Really? Mm-hmm. I'm, su- I'm surprised about the Smash one, honestly. Well, uh, uh, see, we talked about it on, it. on a prior it's, podcast. It's the name. Yeah. And, and then I took a closer look into it. It is a lot more detailed than I thought. They, I, I, did, I hate that they didn't go color. It's still just gray. But they the detail they did go... Oh my, oh, my God. It would, it would have been, been insane. So pretty. But... It is very detailed in the characters that they did put on there when I took a closer look at it. Um, so I, I do like it still. Not still not close to as much as I like the Pokemon one, and which kind of comes along as to why we can say we will be unboxing the Pokemon one in the, in the future. Yeah. Um, but I'm really, really excited for where Nintendo's going with this because, I, like you said, everything is coming together for them, and yeah. their games are... Super Smash is a huge game for them that's going to be... Pokemon is a huge well, game, yeah, too. yeah, I'm so excited for that. Don't and get me started. Animal Crossing will that, be, but, too. Oh, yeah, okay. Um, yeah. It Kevin, will. I know it will Kevin's be. No, not just for me. I mean, the, that's a huge game. You guys I watch told and Annabelle, see. and I literally went deaf from the shriek, so... <laughs> Yes. Telling you, man. She will be there for you to play with, I Kevin. told Kevin, we and the same thing happened. Exist. I know. It happened, I heard it. The listeners didn't hear it, because it was a an octave that couldn't be picked up by the mic it was insane but broke all the windows it was just super saiyan killed every dog within a mile <laughs> oh my that was tragic dark. i apologize dark. that's uh, that so dark going dark with it you so we're gonna all, move on just came to the we're gonna door move on from nintendo now <laughs> back to sony oh. Sony had a surprise announcement. They are going to. This comes from GamesIndustry.biz. Sony had to launch PlayStation Classic on December third. The mini version of the classic console will be preloaded with Final Fantasy VII, Jumping Flash, Ridge Racer Type Four, Tekken Three, and sixteen other games. Please, Lord, give me medieval. I only heard two games in it that I cared about. Sony Interactive Entertainment is jumping on the trend for. The retro hardware with PlayStation Classic, a new version of its first groundbreaking console. PlayStation Classic will launch worldwide on December 3rd, the same day as the original PlayStation's release in 1994. 
two days before. This comes preloaded with I'm 20 old. games. Correct. Did uh, I mention? not on there. It's a waste. Uh, I'm not and the full it. list in, in the article, it. it's Final Fantasy VII, Jumping Flash, Ridge Racer, Ten Type Four, also Tekken 3, Wild Arms. Wild Arms is dope. Yeah. But there's still... The hardware That's itself is right 45% smaller than the original. Oh, my and God. And it will come packaged <laughs> with a HDMI cable, USB cable, two controllers for local multiplayer. Two? That means That's actually dope. It's probably Oh, they all come. Yeah, I was going to say, the, yeah. the original PlayStation wasn't that big. Uh, same thing. <laughs> yeah. it is, it's, about, it's, it's the minis. But we saw, yeah, we we saw, saw the SNES. Minis, but it's probably yeah. the size of it's like tiny. a new iPhone. Yeah, it's <laughs> literally, it's very tiny. though. Uh, the PlayStation, PlayStation Classic will be available for ninety nine ninety nine in the U.S. Tone it down a little. Make it the same price as S- 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 I know. S- why is it more than everything else? The others are all seventy nine ninety nine. Yeah, they are. Uh, there are also those other games must be freaking awesome. Medieval, medieval better be on that's there. all I Tenchu want. Tenchu and Medieval. Castlevania Symphony of the Ninth. When we talked, be on we talked about this Period. way back when we discussed our turn. earliest memories of video games, and Tenchu was that game for me. No. Yeah. And if that's not on there, that's going to hurt my soul. It all depends on licensing, honestly. I oh, think yeah. there's going to be Twisted Metal, Tekken. Oh, my God. 100% PlayStation 1 Twisted, Twisted Metal, Metal was so fun. It was so good. Seven's already on there. We know Tekken 3's on there. I don't know how they ruined I'm gonna Twisted say, Metal, by the way, but they found a way. I'm going to say Castlevania Symphony Night's going to be on there, because if it's not, then that's dumb. <laughs> good reasoning. Because <laughs> if it's not, that's Can't dumb. argue with that logic. So dumb. Uh, it's dumb, Sony. Change it. <laughs> Fix it now before I have Ken's to buy it. right. It's going to be all licensing. Whoever owns it now is going to be the one that made that decision. Yeah. So any other thoughts on the PlayStation Mini? I think it's going to be awesome. Mini. <laughs> Just might as well call it that because uh, that's what it is. The PS Mini? PS Mini. Classic. 45. Official. We're probably. calling it the PS Mini. It's the PS Mini here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> We should have been the one selling it. That's yeah, right. What, look, listen to this marketing. <laughs> Way better. Jeez. Fantastic. You got you got my money. Could have got it. Our final news topic for today comes from Mashable. Another sad one. This is very sad. God. Telltale Games to lay off all but 25 employees, and they announced the majority studio closure. The company went through a major round of layoffs Friday, dropping the size of its studio from about 250 people down to just 25 as a developer moves toward majority studio closure. Uh, Telltale is known for its narrative-driven chapter-based games like The Walking Dead, The Wolf Among Us, and Batman the Telltale series. Telltale is holding on to the small group of people to complete the final season of The Walking Dead, which still has three announced episodes expected to release in September, November, December. Is The Wolf Among Us 2 out? No. No, it's according never to be completed. <sighs> according to reports, soul. the second Wolf Among Us game and the recently announced Stranger Things game have both effectively been canceled. Oh, that hurts. Telltale Games started in yes. 2004 and rocketed in popularity with their critically acclaimed Walking Dead game in 2012, introducing their narrative episodic style to a broader market. Along with games based on The Walking Dead, Telltale created narrative games based on other popular series, including Minecraft, Borderlands, Game of Thrones, Guardians of the Galaxy, and a whole bunch more. Now, Telltale has released an official press release, and it says, Today, Telltale Games made the difficult decision to begin a majority studio closure following a year marked by insurmountable challenges. A majority of the company's employees were dismissed earlier this morning, with a small group of 25 employees staying on to fulfill the company's obligations to its board and partners. CEO Pete Hawley issued the following statement. It's been an incredibly difficult year for Telltale as we work to set the company on a new course. Unfortunately, we ran out of time trying to get there. We released some of our best content this year and received a tremendous amount of positive feedback, but ultimately that did not translate to sales. With a heavy heart, we watch our friends leave today to spread our brand of storytelling across the games industry. Very sad news for Telltale. Tragic. Wolf Among Us was by far my favorite of their games. I have to agree. And the second was announced, and I was so hype, and now it's canceled. That is is heart They, When you really think about it, they kind of revolutionized not really gaming per se but they they kind of brought comic books 
to a they, video game. They and, revolutionized or graphic novels, based games. Yeah, they, just, they, they gave sure. they gave you uh, stories that you followed and and you and you yeah. continued through them with choices that you thought yeah could continue and matter. And it's one of the biggest things ever to to because I I love The Wolf Among Us. I played oh god yeah it was so I've good. played the Borderlands prequel pre whatever it is the pre sequel whatever mm-hmm. Telltale stories from the Borderlands. I've played a whole bunch of different titles that they've done, and it's. It's just sad to see, like something so memorable, mm-hmm. uh, and different, and it, it, go it, away. It kind of it, it separates itself from the from the gaming industry in a way that was good and and really positive. And I mean, even with like their pricing was so affordable, they they never well that that and in the end yeah. it comes back to bite them because although they did have like I said they they did innovate in a way that was kind of different. It, it, at the same time, they never got the uh, the giant they support. Charging that really... sixty dollars a game is the thing. Well, yeah, uh, most well, of them were nine ninety nine. It, they? Or it looks like they, yeah, they may have twenty usually. Yeah, it looks like they may have expanded too much, yeah. right? Because they had they had a good amount of uh, personnel at the studio. They got some of these sales coming in. They got some of these licensing deals with like was, uh, PlayStation Plus. Because of what happened in 2012, when they yeah, skyrocketed, they blew it, up, it, and they, they really the growth, they moved to really. a new building. Right. They hired a lot of staff, and it just collapsed. Mm-hmm. So, and it's it's kind of a it, it's something that does happen. It's a danger for um, anyone. Yeah, yeah any Ooh, growing company, this company. can well, happen. That's, too, this, if you're that's grow. this business, man. The game yeah. industry, in particular, one undersold game. Can ruin could you. end the company. Oh yeah, absolutely. Well, and you've seen most the, of the time it actually does. You've seen companies like Kingdoms of Amalur was a yeah. fantastic game. Well, and actually, they, no, that and they game sold really well. That no, I know, but but from there on, taxation. they kind of went under. Um, and you've seen you've seen other studios that this has happened to. Uh, Nether Realms we were just talking about with Midway. Midway. Yeah, Midway. Mid- they had to buy themselves from Midway to make sure that they didn't go under or be so- best thing they ever did. Were make sold sure to they somebody didn't else. Lose yeah. Mortal Kombat. Right. That would have been terrible. So it, you've seen big big studios that sometimes can't. They have an underselling game and they can't keep up. They can't manage it. So it it is a sad reality. That, yeah, but it, when it comes down, Nether Realm became. If Monster Hunter World had it been what it was, Capcom may have gone under. Oh yeah. yeah, I don't know about gone no, under, no, but they, no, they, they would have suffered. They into said that they Hunter put World. everything they had into Monster Hunter World. They did. I, I mean, this is so. This if is, that game undersells, that's that's no probably may cry. That, yeah, no Resident that's probably Evil. not much more from Instead, well, Resident super, Evil super sold well and, sold really well yeah, for them. I mean, exactly. So. This is obviously terrible news, but uh, there's a positive outlet to this that we can kind of focus on. Those people who came and are coming from t- the Telltale, you know, Brand. industry, they're they're going to be hired, and they're going to be. You know, bright minds in I mean, different games. For so. sure, yeah. there will be opening. These people, I'm, and Bioware yeah. is always like I was saying. I'm, the, I'm hoping that which a good chunk of them, Bioware is going to take them under their wing and be like, make us games. Now. Well, but literally, the, the way that the, I found out about this was the that. developers for Anthem tweeting how how sorry they were and literally saying apply to Bioware because we're always hiring. Oh, so it's it, it's like you said, it's the gaming industry. These people, a lot of them will be hired, but at the same time, a lot of them will probably uh, it's going to be a struggle. And it's just something you kind of have to deal with in in a business world. But it, it's very sad to see somebody like Telltale, who gave us something so different and so good, uh, kind of go under this way. So it is. Thank you, Telltale. Though. Moving on from the news, anybody got anything else? That's mm-hmm. all I had for this week. Just good luck to Death the Stranding, devs Death Stranding, and yeah, yeah, good luck to you guys. And everything. Oh it's yeah, there is tough that. time. What is it? Death Stranding. The, the minute of Death Stranding oh, that came TGS. out. Oh, the TGS. There was, yeah, there was. Gameplay yeah. trailer. Death Stranding. Uh, so the, Giant Shadow Cat did you say gets summoned, trailer? and that's it. You mean, you gameplay, mean, right? You mean the, no. Uh, I don't cinematic. Know I don't know what that is. <laughs> we, have, we can't confirm. New video. <laughs> there we for go. I don't know. Death Stranding from Kojima Games. If it's a game. Or a movie. <laughs> Kojima a Productions. Movie. Yeah, actually, we, we it's called. figured out that it's <laughs> actually it real life. It's actually a movie. We don't even know what it is, but it looks amazing. Uh, I want to fight that. Sure. I don't know what the hell yeah, that was. Yeah, I don't so. know. So basically, if you guys haven't watched it, I'm sure you can find it on YouTube. It's it, just another uh, Death Stranding confused mind. everybody. It's about you're it's just, about a minute long. You're just gonna be. Confused. You're gonna. Anyway, what basically what happens? There's some kind of guy. He's got a lot of the similar suit to what you've seen Norman Reedus wearing, and he kind of takes off a mask and puts it into a, a dark oily the, goop stuff. That's the been shadow showcased. creatures we've seen on the ground. 
and it turns into a massive lion. It's a shadow cat. Monster okay, shadow cat with a golden mask. With a golden same mask same. face, and it roars at you, and then it ends, and nobody knows what's going on. He's he does have some dialogue there. He just basically tells you good luck. Uh, and it's much, going yeah. to you're yeah. gonna lose. And then he disappears. Yeah, good luck, have fun. He also had the the same baby membrane energy pack. Yes, as, saw that. And yeah. the, the, and the, the uh, baby membrane. <laughs> I don't know what this thing is called, but the little flashlight thing, the sensor, thing, yeah. sensor. It and it also looked different and completely different golden. than his. It, it was shiny. dope. It was. I want so to be like him. Legendary when I grow up. character, most likely. <laughs> uh, yeah, he's I got have, the legendary gear on. He does. I have no is. idea what this game is. I I watched this and I literally was just like, "What is happening?" I. Couldn't tell you. And you see Norman Reedus' face for a second, and the confusion and surprise you see there is That's exactly about, what my, my face, face looked like. I was like, oh, when I was watching this, because I was like, yeah, mine too. right what, there with you, Norman. What just happened? This looks beautiful. No idea what it is. Great movie. Look, yeah. look for that in theaters. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we have no idea. But yeah, check it out for yourselves. I'm sure you can find it on YouTube. I don't know what it's under, because as uh, Kev announced, it was at the Tokyo Game TGS, Show. TGS, yeah. It, uh, how'd you find that? I just, uh, well, I was, was trolling just, through Facebook, and then- stranding. I saw it on um, just Death Stranding. You'll find it. Yeah. Yes, literally, Almost it's the first thing that popped up right now. It's it's a minute long. Yeah, it's if anybody can find any headway, please let us know. Let us know about the details of this game if you figured anything they out. They don't know. We want to just wait till the knows. demo drops. Well, and they Kojima did. doesn't even. Know. Oh yeah, well the demo drops. We're gonna sit there going, huh? At the same time, <laughs> you you guys may have ideas that we don't yep. that we haven't discussed. So we do have the comment section right there on the. Uh, old tsgg dot online. So if you guys right there on that old <laughs> tsgg, if you guys have online. any ideas or or anything about Death Stranding, because we're pretty much uh, you just want to tell us how much we suck. Just let us know. <laughs> we're Come on down, tell us how we suck. <laughs> Subscribe. We're pretty there. perplexed about that. So uh, let us know what you think. Come on down, tell us how bad we are. Oh, please don't have All to right, ever go go for that. Tell us how bad we are for that. Well, yeah. flame oh. Kevin, not us. That was terrible. <laughs> I apologize. Moving on to our featured game of the show, Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Brennan has been playing this exclusively. so Not exclusively. Tell them what else you've been playing first. I've been playing some Madden 18 again. What? <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, the, uh, played the Eagles-Patriots Super Bowl on all Madden. And they lost. I lost a lot. <laughs> he won. But I ended up winning, so that's what matters. So He turned it back to... Beginner. Did you win no, any of them? All Madden is no. the dumbest thing ever. All Madden essentially is your receivers drop the ball no matter what. That's it? It doesn't make any sense. It, they literally, it'll hit them in the hands. They're wide open. They'll just fall to the ground. Zach Ertz dropped a wide open ball. I was like, that man has probably the best hands in the NFL, and he just dropped that ball? Okay. All right. Sure, 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 <laughs> Well, let's oh, see. Alshon Jeffrey. Reaction. Alshon Jeffrey, too, also could not catch a pass. I... Ch- Tory Smith was my leading receiver. I, I don't know if you guys he are fans of football out there, but Tory Smith couldn't catch a pass to save his life last year. It was bad. That said, Tory Smith, you helped win the Super Bowl, so I love you forever. What he said. Two things. One. Sports cast. <laughs> no. One. Madden NFL has no competition. Two. It's an annual release. Correct. And what do you expect? a lot of money. It's terrible. From the what do you expect? Actions. They have no. Uh, they have no really good, competition. Though, so I, I mean, get on two K's law. Two K has competition. Get on 2K's what? Love. NBA Live. Stop. Is that when was the last one that the, of those that came out? Is that a new one? Yeah. Well, no. Live used to come out from EA a long time ago. Then it destroyed, got imploded, and it came <laughs> back, and it failed miserably. He says. And then it came back yeah, again. It's failed it failed three miserably times. again. Competition. Three separate and times. And then it came failed. back last year. And it did okay. reset the bar for itself, and then this year is getting better. So Before 2K destroys it again. 2K is just at a level now where they are so great. It's hard to beat. That it's going to be hard for NBA Live to get to that level, but they're slowly getting there. But yeah, I only they just got to fail five more because, times. Uh, yeah, it's right. just five or well, six. I don't, well, they went through a lot of personnel in, gotcha, those, gotcha. in those changes, too. But Madden was just uh, in between Tomb Raider because, like you guys know, Tomb Raider does make me nauseous and headaches. Uh, so I do need a break at least every couple hours just to ease my head. And uh, Madden can do that because it's just throw the ball, catch the ball, throw for 10,000 yards a season. So it's... Shed your skin and get back into the game. Yeah, exactly. And back into the game I actually enjoy, Tomb Raider. So 
like I was talking about with uh, a couple podcasts back about Tomb Raider, it really explores Laura's dark side. Uh, her obsessive gene that everyone in the Croft family seems to have with finding out historical events, figuring out the puzzles, what, why this happened, what's happening, and this they may also have, some have spoilers, the, uh, by the way. I want to say that before minor. we start. Keep them minor. Yes. Minor okay, spoilers. I'll keep them minor. There are supernatural events in these games. I don't know if you guys have played any, but they do. Like in the first one, it was the Oni and the Yokai. I actually haven't played any of the reboot. I got. So, I literally started the first part of it, and I realized how visceral that game is. Like it is visceral. completely one hundred percent. The first part of the first one. Yeah, the first part of the first one, and it's insane. Like you literally can get impaled in like the first couple of minutes of the game, like a couple times, different oh, yeah. places. You uh, start the new one pinned under a rock. You have to use a knife to kind of skin your leg a little bit to to push it up. You know that just sounds so nasty. <laughs> Almost too nasty. You know, it'd be a better game if it weren't so nasty. I think. <laughs> oh, uh, actually, I do have a question. Um, so, does this How take nasty place? Is it? Does, it, does this take place? Is this like a direct sequel, prequel? What is it? Oh well, it's all the same storyline. Trinity. I don't okay. know if you guys. That's the enemy of Lara Croft. Essentially, they're trying to find these historical artifacts and kind of use them to control the world and reshape it how they want. A la Templars, for example. Pretty much. Yeah. Um, She's stopping them and free will. And preserving Assassins. the artifacts and right. everything. Yeah. And her giant mansion. <laughs> yeah. Also that. Go that. Do you get to go around in the mansion and check out the artifacts and stuff? Uh, you well, you play, uh, there's flashbacks when she was a little girl and how her dad got murdered. And uh, I actually took a really nice screenshot. She uh, That's how she learned how to do all her crazy climbing and rock climbing and stuff. So in the one flashback I've played so far, she climbed her mansion, her dad's mansion, and then kind of snuck into, all right, so some more backstory, actually. When her mother died, her father, who was very obsessive, like I talked about, kind of lost his touch with became a shut his human world. Oh, really? So it was just find the artifacts. He loved her, but he didn't really acknowledge her a whole lot. He became and obsessed he with his work. work. Right. And he locked all his mother, her mother's stuff away in like a hidden room. Mm-hmm. So that was her, her mission in this flashback was to get into the hidden room just to kind of connect with her dead mother, which is terribly sad. But It is. But I took a really That's nice screenshot. That's pretty nasty, I'd say. <laughs> so nasty. <laughs> uh, she's up on top of the mansion. It's overlooking like the English countryside. It's actually probably the favorite picture I've ever taken on the Xbox, but I'll put that in the article when I review it. Um, so, so how are the combat mechanics in this? Combat's kind of where it's always been for the Tomb Raider series. Uh, if because I haven't played, so name a game that would be similar or up the same alley as this. Would you go Assassin's Creed route? No, would you go, not even close. No, not at all. Nothing like more that. Like the it's Last got of guns us? and everything. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, more like very Last similar. Of us. That's a good, that's a good comparison. Uh, yep. It's kind of a midway between The Last of Us and Assassin's Creed because you okay. climb trees, you can rope arrow people up into the canopy, yeah. you can you can headshot them and all that stuff. Uh, so it's it's midway in between there, and yeah, because uh, you got to do a lot of survival instincts type of thing, yes, and, and it's obviously a lot of sneak fighting traversal is a huge part of the game because you're constantly rock climbing, jumping off stuff, getting impaled every other minute. If you well, miss they a do jump. have a lot of puzzles and That'd things be me. too. Jump puzzles, getting impaled. yeah. Uh, so it, very it, there's a platforming game. going on here. Yeah, it sounds like a game I would actually enjoy. It is. It, really I good. was surprised when I started watching him play it because I was like, "This is good," and then I was watching during a cutscene. And the facial animation is the best I've ever seen in any game ever. I've never seen it better than this. Hands you down. were surprised that a Square Enix game is good? No, Square Enix not that it was good, but it was just is it still how, how uh, good it was. Is it still Crystal Dynamics doing this too? Are they still part of this? I'm not sure. I have no idea. I have to look that up. I'll but, take a look. Well, I was going to say. <laughs> well, I was literally it? watching yeah, it, and I, I was you. like, this cutscene, and I was like, you can see every freckle. On like on so one of these the characters are arms cinematics. And, 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 well, this one was. Are these pre-rendered or are they part of the game engine? No, Do they're part know? of game engine. They're all everything is an engine. Yes. So so when Laura talks, you can see like the wrinkles on her forehead move. Uh, you can see the crow's feet between her eyebrows, and it's, it's just, just insane. And the mouth movements and everything is spot yeah. on. It's so the they best, used it's official the best facial animation I've capture. ever seen in Good. any game. You're looking for de- uh, the developer. Yeah. Eidos? Eidos Interactive, yeah. It's not Square at all, is it? 
Oh, it's no, Squeenix. It's, yeah, it is. Well, it's yeah. Squeenix Bob title, but and I'm I don't know. Sure so it's Eidos. Were, did they used to be Crystal Dynamics? I don't know. I, I couldn't tell you. Kind of that's, that's a throwback. long time I'm ago. I'm telling you how good this game is. Eidos right Interactive. Yeah, that's who it is. And basically, I was from that point on, I was actually watching him more than I was. I was playing Overwatch at the time, but I was watching him more than I was playing it because once I saw that, I was like, what is this? He had to tell them all. But ho, ho, ho. We can... We can oh, no, he was still getting game. kills. No, I, yeah. Still murking dudes. He was Correct. still going off. I was still killing everything. <laughs> but I was like... I was like, man, this is... And then I watch him die, and she falls into the ground, and, well, he missed a jump, and as Jake said, it's very visceral, and she just kind of smacked her head on a rock and was dead. And I was like, well... That's, I am not kidding. Like, it's That bad. is interesting. Well, that's well, what should happen. In the first game, her ship goes down. Yep. Uh, it splits in half, uh, and she gets washed up on an island, and uh, she gets captured eventually, and she's hanging from a rope. Uh, she sets herself on fire with the rope to burn through it, and then when she lands, she gets impaled on a piece of rebarb through her it's, left like side. It's I think it's she more has to like pull that out and then cauterize it. So I mean, it's very and you're she's doing all this with a with oh, she's a beast. Yeah, she's, yeah. She's also juiced as hell. <laughs> like, she is ripped in this game. Well, That's because at this point, be if it's been three... Well, I mean, yeah, you if, should see the climbing stuff she does. If it's been three sure. stories of this, I guarantee she, yeah, she takes, she's no, a monster. takes no shit from nobody. She has her point. dark side. Look, at <laughs> one point last night, actually, I got washed up on a riverbank, and uh, she yeah, woke up to a guy pointing a gun at her, and she just goes, don't try me. And then she just <laughs> destroyed him. <laughs> it was just a gun in her face. That's awesome. I was like, yep. That's, so uh, sounds about right. Yeah, I was, <laughs> is the so speaking of the story and the gameplay of it, is it open world? Is it linear? Uh, it's an open world. It is open world. So is it really? This yep. where was where I was the most impressed. Um, and Better it, than Spider. And it world. was because it, I we came directly from Spider Man to this, and I watched him do this whole quest line, uh, basically like a little puzzle, and then he came to oh, the they're end. Called, they're called tombs. Tombs. Just a, just a, and it came to the end, and um, oh. it upgraded some of the gear that he had, and he got an achievement for it. It was like the the maximum upgrade of the knife, and the, oh, that was a quest line he's talking about. It was, a side, it was quest. a side quest line, yeah. Do you have to choose to raid these tombs? Yes, they're optional tombs. Yes, that you can. <laughs> Look at his face. Tomb. Tomb. <laughs> he was blown away. I was right trying now. to get by it without Me too. being so disgusted, but uh, he I just puked had in my to. mouth a little. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but so, yeah, yes, they are optional tombs. They're called challenge tombs. Uh, when you beat them, you get a skill that you can only unlock through doing them. Uh, the one I got last night was faster health regeneration, and that's the one where I had to. It was like use a sundial to point at crystals right. to move platforms to get. I love puzzles stuff. like that. It was awesome. it was pretty cool to watch. So you get this. Is this a permanent upgrade to yourself? Do you have to choose through other upgrades? Or uh, yes, there's that... a full skill tree, but with the challenge tombs, it's a permanent. It's oh. it unlocks that skill, okay. and that's the only way to get that skill mm -hmm. is through doing them the tomb uh, but other than that i mean i've spent probably 60 skill points already so far in the game and i have about half the tree done so it's it's very in depth it's, yeah nice robust to use your term because there's also a crafting system like you wait wait hold on, hold on i gotta get to the bottom of this why is that my you, term you love, love the robust. word robust i, do? I probably use that your term? favorite word that no i've way. ever heard Always. you say really listen to our and old podcast amateur. before i gotta I go back and listen i didn't even realize i used you this term use it so much robust <laughs> But yeah, it it really is. There's a crafting system for your gear, uh, like your your actual clothing, multiple weapons. So it's like you get a, a bow, a machine gun, pistol, and shotgun. But you can get different types of shotguns, machine guns, etc. Uh, currently, I have two bows, two shotguns, two machine guns. And you made like a toxic grenade at one point. Yep, I have uh, lure arrows. The... They stick into the ground and they make like a noise to lure enemies over, and then they explode in toxic mist. Oh, I can Which shoot is an them upgrade. They didn't into start that way. enemies, and they'll explode in the group, kill them all. That's really uh, cool. I can trap the it, bodies. It, it so was impressive. When they come over to investigate them, it'll just explode into toxic mist. I can recall, I think it was back at E3 when we got to see a gameplay trailer of this. You were very negative about this Yeah, game. I was, 100%. I still am negative about the thing I was negative about then, too. So it's sounds... a stealth kill mechanic. It's you, very oh, good in just... this game. I like it a lot, but there's a devil stealth kill skill. And so you get the one guy, and this guy's looking right at you, and he lifts his gun up, and you just kind of slow time jump, stab him in the face. And I'm like, <laughs> what is this move. nonsense? And he doesn't move. Would you prefer the ACO's, Assassin's Creed Odyssey's method, yes, where you 
That is not smooth, man. You super speed run sprint. Oh, you're talking about the, uh, the, warp the Noctis strike. warp yeah. dash? Oh, no, I was talking about like early he Assassin's means, Creed. Like, when the you sound effect is even like, Swoop. you can hear the footsteps like, he's running up in there. It's super speed. I would love that. He's the Flash. No, that was the mechanic I was very critical of. Yes, it was very unrealistic. But I like the rope arrow a lot. It's very reminiscent of the rope arrow from Assassin's Creed. But instead of like hanging them, you kind of shoot them through the body with an arrow, so they're dead. And then you and pull then them up into the trees to hide them. And you and actually then hide them with an upgraded skill. You can hide them in the canopy. So right. She kind of sh- slides down and Spider Man's them up in there, and it looks better than Spider Man doing it with his ledge attacks. So I'm just saying, oh, they shouldn't do that better, in my opinion. But, but they did. And you are continuing to work on the story. Yep, I'm about sixty percent done. Uh you're going to be reviewing that for us? I sure am, Kevin. We how put many, that up uh, on the TSTG.online. How, so how many hours? Uh, probably 10. 10 how long hours? do you think it is? About 20 hours, you think? 15, 20? It's not a super long game from what I can tell. What about the open world aspect of it? Is there going to be a lot of we'll challenges be, to do okay, or so stuff I've like that? So I've done uh, six or seven tombs so far. Uh, there's crypts, which you go through those. They're kind of like tombs, but they're less, uh, less puzzly, more just jumps and climbing. Uh, you get gear from those, and you can then craft that gear, uh, either an upper body or a lower body piece, which give different benefits. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, because I noticed take you longer were wearing, to get detected. You were wearing more experience like, uh, for stealth kills, like fur armor when you when you were coming out of the water. Was that like actually something that she was wearing? I'd have to rewatch it, but I think that was the armor. He's I was upgraded wearing. a few times because yeah. the last time I saw him, he was wearing green. I've got like forty six different yeah. sets of armor at this point, and they are visually different as well. So it does change how she looks. How she appears during like cutscenes and everything. Yes, I have to imagine that's an industry standard now. I would hope. I mean, yeah. Uh, other than in JRPGs, because they Cause don't they do never that change. ever. But there was only one time in Spider-Man that it didn't, and that was not something we can talk about right now because this is not spoilers for Spider-Man. <laughs> there you go. Um. Yeah. Any other questions? Uh. Overall, oh, actually. Uh, Crips, so you get the gear, and then there's documents you can find about previous adventurers and what they did on their travels before dying horribly, uh, and is artifacts, like a staple? which is very cool because it they is, all die it's horribly. Like, That's how it happens. Re- historical, like it's it's real. It's they tend they not everything about it is real, but so they tend to stay pretty accurate as far as what's going on. Uh, the actual adventurers, things that people have these this adventurer actually did visit this area so this could have happened this may not have actually happened when they were there but they did end up very visiting that area so right it's which is really cool because it gives you a little bit of a I mean, background the area yeah. she goes to is archaeological hot spots around the world so mexico peru uh, is where this one is set the last one was set in like serbia or speaking Siberia. of the the settings how do they look oh, beautiful. You're, <laughs> yeah. uh, you're in the peruvian jungles it, it's it, perfect it's so well done and, awesome. And I think part of it, I think the best part about the game for me is that we weren't going to get it. It came with our Xbox One X, and then it's such a such a big surprise for me to watch Which it. Which and- all of you will know if you happen to go over to youtube.com slash society <laughs> and check out our Xbox All Access unboxing, unboxing video. We all said that at the same time, too, There's so the they have to do it automatically. It's amazing. Um, and... It, so it's such a big surpri- surprise for me because it's such a good game. Like, uh, there was one part that he was doing where he was jumping. It was like a burning rig or something, and it, that's what I recorded. It's so you got that one? it's so visual. Oh, that's what you're showing us. Yeah, yeah that was really and nice. It's, it's so well done visually because it, it, the camera angle they they take, which is the one that makes us sick. We can't <sighs> we can't play it, but it makes it so so cinematic and so visual that they do so well with the background and everything because they have to because with that angle you're going to see all that uh so that's been as it's a really cool surprise for me because it the angle isn't so bad in this one i don't know if my lasik surgery did something for me or whatever but it doesn't bother me as much anymore must be nice <laughs> um, but but like it visually it's stunning it's it's incredible no, i'm not surprised i mean the first one was such a good game i loved it uh, but it did give me the headaches and nausea. And the second one, it did it even worse. I don't know if it was just the landscape because it was snowy and gray because you were in uh, Siberia. Overall, how many hours do you expect players are going to be able to get out of this game? Probably 30 to 40. 
30 to 40 100%? total 100 percent because there's a lot of the collectibles the documents that he was mentioning are like they're they're like the assassin's creed there collective there. feathers lore, like, it, it's a lot right. see all that and right. read it um speaking of mrs ms croft let's talk about some of our other video game heroines that we like who are some other legends besides laura who would like to start? Segue, but I'm who's your, who's with your Laura favorite? Laura is my favorite by Laura's far. Laura's your favorite? Hands down, yeah. Favorite female heroine. Do you have a reason? She's an epic badass. What do you <laughs> yes, mean? The try is. me scene? She oh, she really my is. God. That was... That's hardcore right there. <laughs> well, Especially because she had him just in the throat. Up. She so. just said, try me. <laughs> that was her first reaction. Who's next? I'll, I'll go next. Um, I'm got, I got to go to Metroid. Samus is. You're going Samus. I have to. She's just okay. I think the biggest thing for me, uh, the biggest memory I have of her is when I was young and I would play it on. I think it was my first game of Metroid, and it was on Game Boy Advance. And the first time you die, she kind of like pops out of her suit, and you see it's a girl. And I was like, "Holy cow! This is a. F- I've been playing a girl the whole time, and it's like this girl's a badass." And especially for me as a young kid, I was like probably eight years old for you at that age you know you've got that mentality and it was just such a cool experience to to be playing that character and you're like well okay this is this is pretty cool and then since then i i think i don't know if there's a better one uh she hasn't been in as many games that i've played because nintendo is really something that i've just gotten back into with the switch fair enough um they had the there was a really good one that they came out with on 3ds i think it was metroid prime 3 Mm mm-hmm I don't and know if it's three. No? Uh, I wouldn't know, I guess. But Metroid, oh, well, I do know Metroid Prime 4 has been announced for the Switch, and we are <laughs> patiently waiting to see more of that, because that was announced at the Game Awards last year, and right. all we got was a logo. We didn't get any action or anything. Right. And uh, E3 came, E3 went. Uh, their September Direct E3 Part 2 came and went. So we're curious if we're actually going to see this at the game awards again this year and get the full reveal and then probably get the announcement for next year and it'll release maybe probably first half right because that's what nintendo does man once as soon as they give you a release date it it comes out out, yeah. yeah they don't and they never delay they never do uh especially a title like metroid your favorite well i had to think about this uh, because I couldn't pick uh, Commander Shepard because we already talked about this. No, you cannot. She's I wanted to. Cause, That's yeah. a unisex character. No, you cannot. Yeah, exactly. Badassery. Tess from The Last of Us. Tess. Ooh, that's a good one. I actually didn't think of her when I was th- going through this. So you're talking, Tess is the first character that you meet along with Joel after the events that happened that made him who he was. And not this only is the game from 2010, my guy. Oh. I think you can talk about it. <laughs> you can totally talk about it. So after his daughter dies, he goes on a on a pretty eleven actually. I think, I think pretty much like a 15 year redemption. binge of you know survival of you know any way possible. Yes, and he then kills everyone. Yes. At, well, he <laughs> does a lot of bad, bad things. things. Yes, <laughs> so. Uh, when it starts off in the beginning of the game, you meet him and his cohort, his partner, Tess, who is one of the most badass people you've ever met. Like, she will, no joke, beat someone to death and then shoot him for the funsies. Like, she is a scary person. And <laughs> she's all about, you know, results. And to experience the actual story that she had, albeit short. You know, where she helped you move along to carry the goods, uh, Ellie, from one place to another. Uh, you grow attached to her because she... Did you just call Ellie the goods? That's what they call the her. The goods. Yep. You can say the package. Or... Package. Well, I'm going to let you take it. Keep going. <laughs> um, you, you, I mean, you kind of, at the end of it, when you see Tess go because she was bitten, you feel for it. And that's a lot of the characters in the game. You feel a lot of characters yeah, as soon as they... As soon as they go, you know, you shocked you picked her just because how tragic her story ended. I mean, I picked her because she's probably one of the most, when it comes to people, she's probably the most hands on, could kill you by looking at you people. Right. I'm shocked you picked her too because my pick is also from the Last of Us universe and it's actually the real one, Ellie. The package. It's the goods. It is the goods. The goods. Ellie 
is by far one of the best heroines of gaming. And from what we saw of The Last of Us 2, and she's just going to get better. what we've seen of The Last of Us 2, what she's developed into is a fucking monster. Laura Croft, to put it. Well, I mean, literally, when, when she was a child With in the second bow. game, once you got to actually play as Ellie, like... She was no joke. Like, uh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, I mean, once she got the rifle, she was taking people out. So. Yeah, is you were executing people. Well, I guess you weren't really doing it, but as you were playing as Joel, yeah, I was doing it. She was coming in <laughs> with knife kills, so it's like she was right there as a child, and now she's an adult, and you get that awesome gameplay footage from E3, and this. This is probably my most anticipated game for next year. Is The Last of Us Two? Kevin, Kevin, Kevin. What? There are so Kevin, many Kevin, games Kevin, to come Kevin, out next Kevin, year, Kevin, man. There are five thousand yeah. different Kevin, games Kevin. coming out next year. Next year is going to be insane. Cyberpunk will come out next year. Uh, yeah. Kevin, Ghost of Tsushima may come out next no. year. Cyberpunk, I, I'm hoping for the 2020. Anthem just for the is IRA. definitely coming out next year. March three. Anthem March three is coming <laughs> out next year. Bio Mutant is coming out next year. Exodus. There's a lot Still of games above coming out. Yeah. C five. Still above that one, too. Oh, you're insane. Yeah. No, because if you think about it... Also, this game might not even come next year, just to put that out. Yeah, this is true. I, mean, I, I have a feeling Last Oof. of Us is the one that's coming out so next I. year. I think so as well. Um, Death Stranding, like we Death said, Stranding. we don't even know <laughs> what it is. Who knows what that it may, is? It may that's just release its own console. <laughs> <laughs> the Death it console. actually doesn't even have a game with it. It's just the, the console. It's a console. The DS1. It just kills you. It's that's a VR-only game. You yes. get sucked in. Oh, that's awful. Please, no. And all Norman those souls, Norman Reedus, all those sludge creatures, those are us. Carries you around. Norman Reedus carries you. Oh, we're the baby. <laughs> we're the, we become the infant. Yeah. Please, Reedus, carry me. Uh, so, <laughs> the, not going to oh, touch that, that one. <laughs> but the, yeah, The Last of Us, to me, was the most cinematic experience I've ever gotten out of a video game before. You play a Tomb Raider game, my guy. I was, they have very similar styles. It's the most cinematic similar, actually. and narrative-driven game I've ever played. It, it felt so good, and the, I love that game. So, yeah, I'm really pumped for part two and to see. And it's Naughty Dog, man. They make yeah, it, they hit it out of the park every time they make a game. So yep. you know what you're getting with that company. And, yeah, that's exactly what I'm looking forward to most next year. That's my most anticipated releases. title. If it releases, if it, yeah, I have a because we don't have a date. I it's Sony, I know, I know, and I think they're going to do the same thing they did next year that they did this year with God of War. We didn't have a release date. It's the one they showed off the most, other than Spider Man, because that one, that one we knew the date. Well, coming up, you you saw so much Spider Man, and then you saw God of War, mm -hmm. and you got a reveal of last of us two. And then you continued to see so much Spider-Man and a little bit more of God of war. And then God of war came out and then now you're seeing a little bit more of last of us. And I think they're going to go the same route and bring it out in probably April. Like they did with God of war this year. And, uh, I don't think that would have any competition either. I don't either. think it's ghost of Tsushima. I don't think ghost of Tsushima is PlayStation four. I think it is. I, don't I think, think it, is. it is, like you said, uh, the death knell of the PlayStation 4. I think it's the last game that does I think release. it is. I don't think it is. I think so. Because when we're watching Cyberpunk, that looks this gen, and when you watch Ghost of Tsushima, it doesn't. And I understand that, but I think it's it. part of it is because... Scaling. Yeah. They can scale up the graphics. On... Well, not only that, it's pretty... it's it's also the it's gorgeous. also what we were seeing at the time. So Cyberpunk had hundreds of people, city, all this to show us. And Ghost and was showing was us. Ghost was showing us a field, um, some trees. yourself. But what you're seeing like is that, that nature. The, you're, seeing the, you're seeing the right. But you're seeing the op, You're seeing the island. Like they didn't. They didn't just create this portion of the island that you're seeing, and then they have to create the rest and bring everything down. They said that the island is fully completed. Everything that you saw. No, I know. Like, everything coming from the distance. They actually arrive. And, yeah, but. But what I'm saying it's is feudal they, Japan. If it's, it's nature with right, little civilization. Right. So it's it's they don't have to put as much effort into like the say the, the hundreds rest, of people the rest that of Cyberpunk the engine, shows right. us. They can they can focus it there, focus it your character, 
the very few people in the area and the, the surrounding area to make it that pretty. So I think it'll be th the end of this console. I think you're definitely going to want to play it on a Pro because it is going to be very enhanced and you, you're probably going to want to play it on like a 4K or 8K TV if you have that capability. And Although I don't well, think anything is 8K can't run enhanced. 8K yet, so. No. It'll just so, look really, really pretty. Yeah, 4K, you're definitely going to want to run it that way, but I think it does end up being on this console. I think it'll be I hope not it nearly as pretty I don't on a play regular wait that PlayStation long. 4. I'm with Brett. I'm with him too, just because I want it to come out. Yeah. I want to play that it's, thing. It's hard not to be hopeful for that. I don't want to wait until PlayStation 5 to play that. I don't know. Cause... I think we saw more of Ghost than we saw of The Last of Us. I mean... I don't know. No, I, no, 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 no. There's been more They last were both just yeah. gameplay. I think those are the two big games, though. But I think, you've seen, we, I think we have three yes. or four different gameplay now of The Last of Us. Oh, I think has more released. I haven't seen yeah. I think they it. do exactly what you said, and they follow their God of War plan and their Spider-Man plan. I think we get one in April and one in September, just like they did this month, this year. They did it, yeah. Because we're definitely not getting Death Stranding next year. Like no. Nobody knows what that is That's yet. It's coming 2027. But this year they released God of War. And in the beginning of the year, and they released Spider Man a couple of weeks ago. That's yep. what they're going to do. And it'll probably be, like you said, Last of Us. And then Ghost, I think, is at the end of the year. You think Ghost is their holiday blockbuster? Yeah. Well, September ish area, yeah. fall. Oh, I'm going to buy Ghost. <laughs> Obviously. Everybody is. You did need to state that. Oh, I'm going to buy the collector's I don't think there's Ghost, a PlayStation for owner out there that's not going to buy Ghost. I would so hope good. not. Because if you are, some people don't like that. You don't Sam plan Ram. on buying well, it, you should anyway. Don't associate with those people. <laughs> I agree. Uh, that's my favorite time period. So those are some of game. our favorites. Any any other honorable mentions? Uh, Female heroes? Yeah. yeah. It's hard. It Princess really Zelda? Oh yeah, she's a, she's a beast when Peach she jet. <laughs> Peach is coming. Uh, Princess that's, Zelda that's in, in, in Breath of the Wild is yeah, not oh, yeah. not a damsel. Like she's, no, she's very not different. Very yeah. far from that, yes. Uh I'd have to go with Aloy. Oh god. From Horizon I always Zero forget Dawn. her and she is so good. None? I mean for any others. Any others? Sure. Would you like me to go into them all? Just name one. Okay, uh, from God of War, you got Freya. Oh, Freya. Uh, God of War 3, you got Athena before she kind of uh, turned horribly evil. <laughs> super evil. Super, super evil. Super evil. Spoilers, guys. Spoilers. Oh, God yeah? of War 3. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> God of War 3. Okay. Thanks for your input. <laughs> you're, you're, welcome. Anybody, you're welcome. Nobody okay. wants to mention Chun-Li? No. She's very famous. Yes, but I mean. I guess we're not talking about fame, right? We're just talking about <laughs> our impact. Honorable. Correct. I mean, she was what, a police officer? It's hard to say anything beyond really like Laura Croft. Like, I mean, that's the she's, biggest impact. She's I can, insane. She's she just is that well-known. prototype. She's, she's been heroic. in the game for a long time. Yes. Oh, yeah. The first Tomb Raider was like. 1990s it was it's been uh, i think it released with the original playstation i think it was the year after the playstation released that laura croft came in they have her original costumes as oh, costume really? the the and like the original they, pixels too oh, so wow. you're like the yeah that's really cool you're like the original playstation it's so just ugly made of the blocks it's so <laughs> ugly all right guys as this is episode 20 and we are celebrating our milestone we asked tsgg followers to write in some questions. <laughs> Let's begin. Um, we we're only t able to narrow it down to six. I apologize to all of the rest of you. The first question we have is from Hannah. <laughs> and she asks, where's Jake? Right here. There he is. Hello. <laughs> in the flesh. For once. <laughs> For once? Ask again next week. Appreciate you, Jake. Appreciate you, Jake. That yeah. was a troll question. We'll ask that again next week. Thanks, Hannah. I appreciate your question. <laughs> Let me give you an answer. I'm right here. Thank you. Excellent answer. Okay. Real question time. You guys ready? Yes. This was from Courtney. She says, what is the worst game you guys have ever played? Mass Effect Andromeda. Oh, really? No, really? I That's the worst game you've ever worst played? Worst game I've ever played no. just because of how disappointed I was. And what they'd done to my favorite game I guess franchise. That would be the well, most fair enough. It was essentially ripping my game. soul from my that body. Was, 
Yeah. That's and the most impactful it for in. him. So. <laughs> That's fair. Brett, what do you got? Uh, I actually was, this question was pretty hard. I was, because I saw it and I was thinking about it and I was like, I. That's the first time I saw that question. I can't, <laughs> I can't really think of one. And the reason for that is just because. Um, I, Let me get this straight. I, I'm usually, no, listen, listen. You I saw the question. reason. And you couldn't prepare yourself. I could right? not prepare That's myself. The first time this I is heard actually that the question. only one I did see. Well, on the spot, he just Jake. destroyed Mass Effect. Uh, the and reasoning drop. is because I'm I'm a very uh, direct person, so if I think a game looks bad, I'm not ever going to touch it. So that's a lot of games, to be fair. There's a lot of games that I don't play that. So Agony. for you, what was exactly. what was something that you were so pumped up about? You played it and it was a flop. I only play good games. I only pick good games. That's why Anthem's going to be Jake, great. Yikes. He hasn't you, played. We've it yet. played okay. bad games. Yeah, <laughs> what? I can't think of one. I mean, we used to play Madden. He's blanked them. Madden. There we go. Madden's the worst them game from I've his ever memory. played. He Madden is them. the worst. You game didn't I've like ever Ghost played. Recon Wildlands. Say yeah, that. that wasn't a bad game. That's just not my style of game. I'm not gonna say the, that. The a question bad is, game. the worst game that you ever played? It's got to be Madden because Madden's a trash can and it just annoys me to even see it on my television at any time. So it's my television. <laughs> trash game. So that okay. would be it. Yeah, I'd have to say Madden. Jake, what about you? Uh, PS1's Heart of Darkness. What? Elaborate. You went back to PS1. Uh, you <laughs> you play as a little kid who... Uh, the Spyro who, reboot? No. There you, you go, Brett. We played that. You get stuck into a profile, like a profile-based game where it's all about platforming. And you're. I think the whole point of it is you're supposed to save your dog from these nightmares that happen. So it's, Your dog? That sounds yes. absolutely horrendous. Good call. Why did you buy that? Yeah. It was, I wasn't up. He was like was. nine years old. Yeah, he doesn't get to choose. Why did you tell your parents to buy you that? It could have been a gift from Why did S. Claus. So I'm, I'm pretty sure it, it, was, it was either a birthday present or a Christmas present that I requested and they got it mixed up with something else. So. Oh, yeah, that happens. The this tragic morning. parent go into, I would buy a computer game. <laughs> and there. I'd like to buy. Mom, I have six one. of that already. <laughs> Take it back. <laughs> Uh, for me, I think my biggest disappointment of all time has to be on PlayStation 3, a game called Lair. This was a launch title for the PlayStation I 3. I wanted to buy a PlayStation 3 for this game. For Lair? Yes. Because it had like dragons and stuff, yes. right? Yes. Actually, yep. you played as a game. dragon rider. Yep. Which to me is amazing. Correct. And then, I, I literally wanted, I was like 14 years old. I saw this on a screen in Best Buy, and I was like, I want yeah. a PlayStation. Visually, uh, it was stunning coming from PlayStation 2 to 3. Mm -hmm. uh, really set the bar for what the next generation at the time was going to be graphically. And, yeah, I was super pumped for it. Got that, and we started playing it. And then it was then that I realized they were putting a lot of money into that six-axis motion controller because the analog sticks didn't work for the game. It was motion controls only. Oh my! So bad. God. That is the that worst thing I've ever. Heard. As you were flying dragons, right? Mm -hmm. I have to match the level of the other with your controller. With the controller. Oh my! And then God. I have to swipe the controller in the direction for the dragon to hit the other one and cause damage. This game did not review well, and Sony's I'd, I'd... response is equally disastrous as, as they, they do. started writing game companies telling them how to review this game and it was much later analog support was introduced yeah but by that time it was much too late so yeah that was a game i was really pumped for and that uh, sounds horrendous whose awful. idea was that i don't know they got fired. i don't Sony. actually they i don't need to be fired. i don't recall when that came out it was the ps3 launch title so whenever the PS3 no i came i completely i remember happened. it because i literally was walking through best buy one day and i saw a guy riding a dragon and i was like i was of course I attached have, to his back i have <laughs> as per usual uh to this day like yoda i have an xbox no, like the uh like a baby a pale, Bjorn. sickly prince in Dark Souls Three. I have a baby Bjorn for him. <laughs> <laughs> the but one like... for larger children. <laughs> JK, but, it's the normal sized one for babies. <laughs> but I, I literally remember walking through Best Buy and seeing that on a on like one of their display screens. It was a showcase piece, and I wanted it. Yeah, and, and I wanted to buy I mean, a PlayStation dragons, because that of it. Pretty much was all it took back then. Yeah, yeah. I love and dragons. It's back actually, the time, it like, actually hurts me a little to know that this it was, was bad. really the dawning of the internet 
reviews and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Like magazines are still very dominant or prominent. And the uh, for Sony to just come out and say, no, you're reviewing it wrong. Do it this way. Think about it How through did this Sony point of view. Succeed? Oh my God! <laughs> well, the Microsoft. exclusive step in all the and the PlayStation Three PS3, and Xbox One. Yeah, it was... PS Three had a very very hard time yep. competing against Three Sixty. Yep. So it was the PlayStation Four that they set out Took to over. win. Came yeah, out gotcha. Well, they came out after Xbox, so they had that advantage. Literally the same thing they did to uh, what was it? Sega. Sega. Yeah. Where they came out and said, hey, it's half the price. And they're like, hey, we did this before. <laughs> well, not half. They cut it by 100 bucks. 100 bucks is still a big saving. It is. For a lot of people, they're going to be like, well, yeah. I'm going to go with that one. So especially after Xbox Microsoft said, this is our digital. price plan since then. Yeah. They're well, still... Microsoft also came out and said, we're going all digital because everybody in the inside was on board with that until Sony went to stand and said, fuck that. We're doing this. You want to share games? Here's a short video on now how to do it. we're all digital anyway. And they handed and it over. now they will suspend your account for that. Right. <laughs> by the way. So, here we are. Thank you for that question. Next up is from K-Dog. And K-Dog says, what do you use Oof. to qualify a good game from the rest of the crowd? That was what's our response. What's our criteria for calling a game good? Calling a game good or to get like our highest rating? It just says she qualify said good. a good game from the rest of the crowd. What's uh, our graphic, criteria? Graphic, combat, uh, presentation, story, I like how we innovation. Combat automatically. Like if the game doesn't have combat, I'm picking it up. <laughs> like that's an automatic. I mean, there's not a lot of games without combat. I would play These Animal days, Crossing. Yeah. I don't think I could play that. But how Kevin, do you feel about it? Animal Crossing. I mean, yeah, the criteria. So it has to be more broad than that. Yeah, it's yeah. not just combat. It depends on the game. Is the thing. Yeah. I mean. Ingenuity, content is honestly story content, content, storytelling. Huge. For me, I'm not trying to spend sixty sometimes. dollars and play the game for five hours and be like, oh, I'm never touching that again. This uh, is a two part question, by the way. The second part is, can mobile games be legitimate, immersive, good games? Yeah, can I'd they meet absolutely. our criteria? It really depends. Because I mean, I'd say for sure. You have you seen the new stuff that they're doing with like iPhone and Android now? Yeah, they, I'm literally. Oh, yeah. They have like 3D I mean, games ESO's coming. Sure do. Blade thing. I mean, I ESO, it's yeah. Not Elder Scrolls Blades. Great right. reviews. Yeah, yeah terrible but, reviews actually. But well, it's not out. I mean, once they so. once they fix it up, I'm sure. But it'll be yeah, great. I'd say it, mobile games would yeah, definitely be, be on fair. There. The, uh, there was a the, game, the Infection game, oh, Play Gink. Oh, Play Gink. Yep. That. That would meet my qualifications as a great game. Honestly, if you're enjoying yeah. it, really, it's like, it, it doesn't really matter what other people think. If you enjoy it and you're you're willing to spend your time on it, it's probably a good game to you. Uh, f- for our qualifications, it it's just most of the time you're not going to say, yeah, it's a good game if you don't enjoy it. So I think that's the biggest thing for me is enjoyment factor. I can't recall the title, which I apologize for this, but if if you guys remember as I'm describing it, Please let me know. Never. The a friend of mine showed me this game on iPad when mm-hmm. I first got one years back, and you go, you're it's like a first person. You swipe the screen, and it's your weapon there, and you go through zones. You swipe to go to the next zone, and there are enemies that you fight, and they have attack patterns, and you can block, you can dodge, parry, and you strike as well. And there are different types of weapons you can get, and there's a story to this, Mm. and playing through multiple times, like there aren't that many zones, but there's a reason to continue going through them all, because you can get different drops, and you can get a drop here, then you can now access another place, so you have to keep going through. Uh, That was the first experience for me that made me realize, and it was visually stunning, the character models that you're facing. Uh, they look fantastic, and the that was the first time for me that I thought mobile games could actually have a presence, and then more, 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 more yeah. mobile games come out, and all they are is microtransaction hell. The uh, the Fate Stay Night uh, mobile app was a good game. Um, I uh... text based choose your own adventures. Oh, I love those. Are, those. those are fun. Yeah, I mean, I play, I play, I played a lot of those because I used to have a really crap phone, and I'm, I'm still playing a couple of them right now. Uh, it really just depends on your own uh, take on it, and it depends on how we feel about it. And yes, I believe that a lot of 
games that you have on the phone are either cash grabs or something that you could, you know, get. Oh yeah, you're never going to be like a a top player in in the without world without paying five thousand billion dollars. Yeah, yeah. They, they, the top you got to pay. But f- as far as enjoyment goes, I mean, like I played, I used clients. to play a gladiator game that was literally skill based, and you you they only had like ten opponents, and you had to pay for further opponents. But it was so much fun to just battle like you're, you're a gladiator, and like you said, they spend a lot of times actually a lot of time actually designing the things like the enemies that you fight. So they do put a lot of effort into them. So the answer to the question is yes. Some good games do come to mobile, and I will give you one right now. Baldur's Gate. What? I mean, Baldur's that... Gate came to mobile. RuneScape. <laughs> it is a mobile game. Go play it. RuneScape. Choice Baldur's of the Gate is on mobile now. What's that? Baldur's Gate's on mobile now. Yes. You know what else is? I don't, I don't care about RuneScape, but I care Next about question. Baldur's Gate. Final Fantasy Comes. three through like all of them are on there. I'm, I have three on my phone. Yeah, they're porting everything because they can handle it now. Right. Well, a lot um, of them even have. Um, you can get a modulator for your phone that I will allow that you to play like Pokemon Yellow and stuff <laughs> yeah. like yeah. that. I'm just phones I'm just against now are literally the small computers. Games that are built for you to wait and pay. Yeah, I hate those. Uh, next question from Jonathan. He says, are esports competitors considered athletes? Is this a two part question? You, you yeah, do you want me to do that? Oh, I was going to let you no. answer that first. What? Athletes? Yeah. Absolutely. Esports competitors, athletes? are they athletes? Of course. It takes so much skill to do the things they do. And, they get, and if you think about it this way, their hands are so primed they could break your fingers. They're their professional own. gamers, which is a tag all no, of its own. No, but it's esports. And it, yeah, it doesn't matter. Uh, there's a they're difference not in my mind football. between they're, esports they're and playing a video professional game. gamers. No, they're, they're if you're competing gamers. in a tournament, yes, they're professional you're an competitors. Athlete. You're an athlete. They're not an athlete. I I'm, absolutely would say so. I get what you're if saying. If you're in a math it requires, are you an athlete? <laughs> it no. requires so much skill. You're just a math genius. But if you're if you're like a chess grandmaster, are you an athlete? Yes, because no, chess not. is a you're sport. You're just a genius. Chess. You're a competitor. Chess you're is a, a sport. I like competitor more than athlete. Me but too. no, they're not. They're not doing anything athletic. I uh, I think they're they're an doing athlete, things absolutely. that are insanely impressive. But that's what professional gamers are. I'm actually kind of impartial between the two. Honestly. I think I'd call them an athlete. I'm a, I'm a maybe. I just think they're the definition fantastic in their own right. For athlete requires physical strength. Mm-hmm. Of which you do not Where did you get this definition? That's the Webster definition. Okay. okay. Well then, How, so they're not. based on that, based on that I definition. would call them sportsmen, sportswomen, or a better term would like be competitor. I like professional gamer, because that's what they are. Professional gamer. I'd also still call them works. an athlete. The second part to this is who is your favorite streamer? By the way, streamer Ninja was just on the cover of uh, ESPN the magazine. Yes, we know. Correct. Athletes. Who is your favorite streamer and why? Who's my favorite streamer? Ninja. Ninja? He's why? the best. What do you mean? That's so weak. He's the best. He's the Who's best. Who's your favorite streamer and why? Uh, Probably XQC, honestly. And if you play Overwatch, you're going to hate me for that, but... Honestly, he's taught me to play a lot of characters. Like I'm a I'm a Ryan main, and he plays Ryan the way I do. He's super aggressive and just throws his body into stuff. And I win a lot of games because I just kind of throw block. myself at things and kill everything. And that's a lot of that is from him. And at the same time, a lot of people don't like his personality. I think I I can kind of see past that and see the marketing aspect of it because he does super well streaming, and he's enjoyable to watch. He's he's insane. He's crazy, but he's really fun to watch, and he he's engaging with his with his stream. So I think I love XQC. He's so fun. I don't get to expand upon mine. He gets a four you, minute segment. You literally said he the best. Ninja. He's I the said best. why. Why you is he enjoyable? He the best. And that <laughs> was the best. It. It's because he wins. He's, I mean, for, so for, uh, for say 2K, I enjoy Smooth Man because he's the best. He drops 60 oh, points no, a game no, no. on That's not, This is just your personal favorite. Exactly. And so he is my favorite. On- because he is the he best. best. He wins okay. at anything he tries at, and he wins consistently. Which was in his uh, ESPN the Magazine article, by the way. Yeah, he says, does it actually say he he's said, the best? He said, he is it doesn't matter what game I play, I will be the best at it. He's the world's best gamer. That is the attitude I have. He, so he is the best. He's he the, is best. the best. The best. He, Jake, do you have a the best? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I've actually watched more uh, Dr. Disrespect. 
uh, more than anything else. Uh, the only reason why is because his 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 commentary is exactly pretty abrasive, and I enjoy the the. He literally calls himself the best two time <laughs> world champion, nineteen ninety six and ninety seven back yep. to back. Doctor disrespect. Yep, that's wrong. It's, I don't know the years, it's but like it's that, literally but it's... the two time champ. Like it's his alter ego, and it's in I. I I, I eat it up like you. I'm. Like I, I watched some of his like some of his stuff on on his stream, and I've watched his like the YouTube bits that they put on there, and I just can't stop. His watching Peruvian it. caterpillar, <laughs> poisonous Peruvian caterpillar. That's his mustache. Nice. It's, it's not a mustache. It's a poisonous. Peruvian I die every caterpillar. time. It's a nice gimmick. And it, every time, that's exactly what it is, and it works. And it, if you look at it from like a marketing standpoint too, you're like, you're like you guys are geniuses. Like yeah, that, I think that's the biggest thing his, with streamers his and green why street, I enjoy them. His like green uh, green uh, screening that he does is just hilarious. The, uh, he'll just get out of his chair, walk like two feet to the other camera, and he's like in an office someplace, yeah. and he's just. So he's got a whole show he's doing. It's, yeah. it's a sports center desk. Like, oh, you know, nice. the he'll desk and he gets yeah. behind it and he's like, and here, and he'll announce. And a lot of his stuff he does with his, like, he'll have partners or whatever. Yep. And if he gets killed first, he becomes an announcer he and he goes, there. goes yeah. to the desk and he <laughs> announces and will, and it, it's really cool. enjoyable nice, to watch yeah. Is, yeah. is what it is. It's a production more than a, a stream. Yeah, it's a definite form of entertainment. Cool. What about you? Mine? Jake. Well, uh, <laughs> oh, personally, shit, oh, shit, oh, shit. I've only watched three streamers, so I'll shout all three of you out. Guyon, Golden Boy, and Boxers Bros. Hey. Are the only three we are pretty great that I've watched. I'll go for that like, fist so bump you right all there. No, you're not getting no fist, fist bumps bumps out. He couldn't the even best. say your name right. Shut he couldn't down. even say the whole thing. Y'all the best. <laughs> <laughs> we the best. <laughs> uh, let's move on. Is it Amy Guyon? has it's, a question yeah. for Guyon? us. Oh, I thought it was Guyon. It's wrong. Hit us with Amy. It's Guyon. Yep. There it is. Hit us with it. Amy asks, I haven't kept up with all of the gaming consoles throughout the years. Truth be told, last console I owned and actually played was a PlayStation 2. I love Nintendo and have been interested in the Nintendo Switch since it came out. I don't need to hear the rest of the question. (laughs) The answer is yes. Get the Switch. I've played it once and I really enjoyed it. My question or questions are, what would be the best game to start with? Since I haven't kept up with all the console changes. Also, uh, okay. Continue. What do you enjoy about this particular console, and what is your favorite game or games to play on it? Honestly, that's really a preference question. Uh, but if I was to pick a game, I'd go for Breath of the Wild Obviously. first, right? Because I mean, there are a lot of games that came out. Kirby's, what was it? Kirby's. Uh, there's a Kirby game that came out. Kirby's great yarn adventure. No, that no, not that, about? not the yarn one. It's that uh, did just come out though. There is yeah, a, like, there's Kirby's a Kirby's adventure, Grand some adventure, rather. something like that. Yeah, there that's are a lot of games platformer. that are coming out, but it yeah. really depends on your preferences. If you like a role playing game, get the um, get Xeno Saga. No, Xeno Xeno Blade uh, Chronicles. Xenogre, is Xenogre Xenogre Chronicles. Yeah, like that's that. JRPG. That's still an RPG. Totally different. <laughs> I mean, if you if you it, that depends. Honestly, the Switch is my favorite console. I think it's just any any console so good. What's so the game where the uh, where the Nazis are uh, Wolfenstein? Wolfenstein? Wolfen- yeah, get Wolfenstein. <laughs> get Wolfenstein. Get Doom. Go there. Doom. Uh, honestly, it, like like Jake said, it depends on your preference. There are the coolest thing about the Switch. I think is that you can take it anywhere. And anywhere. The range of games that they have out now because they've been porting literally everything over to yep. it. It does range from games like Breath of the Wild, Octopath Kirby, Octopath Traveler, Octopath Traveler, games like that that have are. Nintendo games all the way up to like Wolfenstein, Doom. Um, I'm I'm I honestly like super excited for Pokemon out. to come out on Switch. I'm I'm so excited for that, and that would be my recommended game actually, just because I'm Pokemon. Especially if you haven't played a, a console since uh, PlayStation Two, you probably played a lot of Pokemon back in the day, and it's it's kind of a throwback to that a little bit. Back in the day. Sorry, I'm 23 years old. You're right. <laughs> Shouldn't say back in the day, but uh, yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> but I definitely would, uh, especially if you're looking into it in the future. It's it's coming out November sixteenth, and uh, I would it definitely does, yeah. recommend that. It's, de- it's definitely it, a preference question, like you said. Like, yeah. We don't know what she it is, plays. It Off is a preference. Wants a more adult, brutal so, game. Definitely Wolfenstein or Doom. If she's more into the Nintendo style of games, Octopath Traveler looks really good. Uh, Breath of the Wild. One game of the year for a reason. Yeah. Yes, it did. It it was game of the year. Uh, so if so, for my recommendations, I can't recommend one. So I'll because it is preference. Mm-hmm. So I will recommend a few of them, and they will all be Nintendo properties. Uh, number one, definitely The Legend of Zelda: Breath of the Wild, game of the year last year. 
Second title would be Super Mario Odyssey, runner up to Game of the Year last year. And third would probably be Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. And fourth would be Splatoon 2. I think you're going to get a very, very broad range of gaming opportunity there. And you will discover what you like in games by playing those titles. Mm -hmm. And then from there, you can kind of branch out. Yeah. You can go. (laughs) Just Doom. He said play Doom. Doom. (laughs) Doom. Um, yeah, I, I'd recommend, yeah, yeah, those are, those are pretty solid recommendations, I'd say, um, especially because of the Nintendo being, it being Nintendo's titles. Yeah. Those are like their big ones that are, well, other than Odyssey, those have kind of been the chains that they've had going for a long time. They've always had Zelda. They've always had, um, Mario Kart. Mm -hmm. Well, Splatoon's kind of new too, but. One more that I want to throw in there. If you're going to be having parties, get Uh Mario Party. Absolutely. You're going to have a blast with that Especially game. Especially the new one. 80 mini games. When does that come out, Kevin? Uh, October 5th. There and don't is. forget about Doom. That's next <laughs> week. <laughs> but don't forget about Doom. That's the Cry best party to sleep. game. The best party game for a Doom. solo player. <laughs> uh, yeah, Super Mario Party, add that into the mix because that's a, that's a one that you can play with multiple people. Classic board game style. And Looks so good. 80 mini games to play and have fun with your friends and family. And do we recommend the Nintendo Switch? Yes. Absolutely. We recommend it. That is my favorite console of all time. It is. Oh, it's huge. Man. It's just so innovative. Like, it's a handheld, and you can play it on your TV, and it's the even the Switch literally takes one second. You just pop it into the dock, and it just is on your TV. Like, it's the coolest thing ever. Even the Switch. Oh, I know what I said. <laughs> it was intended. <laughs> oh. Okay. Uh, last question, because we're getting short on time. This one comes from Kaylee. Yes, she snuck one in there, but it was such a good one. I had to add it. What makes for the most memorable villains, and what is the most badass villain of all time? Uh, I'm going to lead off here because I'm going to steal it from Brennan in uh, Fallout 3. Or sorry, not sorry. Far Cry 3. What's his name? Bastard. I'm not telling you. Is it (laughs) Pan? It's not Pan. What is it? Give it to me. Voss. Voss. He is the most savage, like just the best villain of all time, and it's and it's multiple elements. Like he's yeah. not even the big bad in that game, which is even it's the insane. best part. Even the best awesome. part, yeah. He's not even like he's not even the worst enemy of the game. He just uh, he he kind of just takes the cake because he gets it from both ends. He's sinister, but he's also he, he gets in there. He's he's pretty savage. He's a complete goddamn psychopath. He, he's That's he's his whole he's thing. insane. Like it. it so he, add to that, he murders your brother in the first three minutes of the game, and then there you go. Yeah, he's a pretty good villain. Uh, so it, Brennan had to steal the thunder, but he yeah, did. He did. I knew that it's he. My that's villain. why I had to start. That's how I had to start instantly because I knew where he was going. You tried here. to steal the thunder. I, did. Yeah. I knew where. I knew where his mind. You was going. tried to steal the thunder and, and then blame s- him for stealing. And it was it. such a good villain. He he really was. He had. Every aspect you could ask of a villain, he was Far in. Far Cry Three, Psycho, definitely the top of the line Far Cry game. By the way, if I had to recommend one, it'd be that one. Yep. So that's mine. All right. So there's Bretts. Uh, I'm gonna think on one. You go, Jake. Oh, good. Badass <laughs> villain of all time. Badass. What, well, the other part of the question was what makes for a, a good right. villain. So. Well, I could answer that part. That's easy. That. Go ahead, answer that part. <laughs> well, I mean, any any villain that you could either relate to or see. In like a personality that attracts you in a way, like the Joker, for example, in yeah, yeah. Batman Arkham, any game, insert any game there, the Joker is probably one of the best villains ever, just because he has been iconic and he yeah. has been someone who's always been a thorn in your side. And every game that you play with him in it, he's a memory that I, like uh, lasts with you. I don't know why you feel connected to the Joker. <laughs> the Joker, but I'm gonna need you to get away from me. <laughs> a literal sociopath. I think Don't worry the about biggest it. part of being a memorable villain, uh, like you said, they can be someone you can connect with. I think alternatively, it's someone who makes you hate them. Correct. Also true. With unending passion. Like Voss So that they your stick in your mind after, like, I finally found mine, Zeus, from the original God of War trilogy. Because he made you kill your family. Sorry well, if that's a spoiler. He manipulated Ares into making you kill your family. He, You were his son. You never knew that until like the third one. But he knew that. Spoilers. <laughs> These games are from like 2010. <laughs> no, Everything's from 2010 with you. Yes. Back in the day. They are Back like 2010. 2010 
when the Big Bang happened and all the games <laughs> came out. Correct. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, he made, oh, yeah, he was a bad one. Made you kill Athena. I mean, well, Athena had sacrificed herself to save him, but uh, he killed you. I mean, you're Kratos, he so you can crawl you. out of hell like a hundred times, but he did kill you. He sure did. Uh, he wiped out the Spartans, which if there was one thing Kratos had for himself, it was his people because he loved them and they all died. Uh, uh, and, including his wife and child. Well, he murdered well, them. Well, he so. murdered them. Through. Murderized them. A delusion of yeah. Zeus's creation. Yeah. Well, Ares, but through well, Zeus. Was, yeah. Ares, and, yeah. But anywho. Uh, yeah, so I mean, the, the hatred I felt for Zeus um, to this day. Like when he was in the new God of War. Spoilers coming up, guys. Tune out if you don't want to hear about the don't. new God of War. I can't tune out. <laughs> Kevin. He's about Jesus. to pass your mic. Right. All right, so we're not going to go into did that. Not know that. Fuck's sake. But uh, yeah, he, he's a villain who stuck with me even today and. Given that God of War is one of my favorite franchises, it uh, I doubt I'll ever forget Zeus. So, fair enough. I'm still trying to think of one. <laughs> so you don't, you're not ready then. Not I really. have to go last. Okay. Um, we're gonna sit here in silence while Jake thinks. <laughs> da, 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 who's your Who's your most badass villain that you fell in love with? Who is it? Give me one from or Final hate, Fantasy or hate. Probably you, Seymour. Seymour. Oh, Seymour, dude. <laughs> Fuck! I that love is kicking the, the shit most out of Seymour. SpongeBob starfish name. I've ever heard. <laughs> I literally only could think of The Simpsons. So in what? Final, oh, Fantasy you guys never played Final Fantasy X? No. Final Fantasy X. That one of the main villains <sighs> of the whole I'm entire you story. That. You guys got to play that one. His his name is Seymour. Don't don't spoil anything. And he's a shithead. <laughs> he is. Literally, is only there to just Piss you off. Mess up your day. I, I hated Arkin quite a bit too. Now that I think about it. Is that the 15 Arkin? What was his name? Arden. Arden. Arden was, yeah. I hated him quite a bit, dude. I liked him as a villain, too. He was a good villain. So I was going to use Arden. Uh, not not as my favorite, but leading up to my like favorite. Honorable so mention. right now, I'm going to tell you, the audience, that this is the final moment of this show. And if you don't want to hear the spoiler that I am going to announce... Wow. I suggest tuning in next week. Oh, so Kevin gets the, spoiler. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm giving them a warning. I don't just throw it out there and then say spoiler afterwards. Uh, so I will thank you in advance for listening. But now, I could say Sephiroth from Final Fantasy VII, but I won't. Your cat is literally named after him. I know. <laughs> he hates him so much, he named his cat after him. I could say Arden from Final Fantasy XV. To prove of Arden. But I won't. The character this is so cinematic. that I will say is from Marvel Spider Man, Doctor Octavius. <laughs> Doctor Octopus, a fantastic <laughs> character that you don't actually learn to hate; you sympathize, and it's unfortunate of the outcome of his life, and that you have to stop him. To me, that is the best villain that I've ever had to fight against. Oh, without a doubt. You're right. The build-up was just for that. You you saw, like we discussed, basically it ranged from you saw him as a man and as his whole life basically was ripped away by disease and by other people, and you saw the evil side of him, and, and you couldn't help but feel like, what would I do in that situation? If I had the capability, would I do this? Probably. I'm not that nice a person. Uh so there you have it. We appreciate all of you for joining us this week on this episode 20 of TSGG Chat. Was it a celebration? Or yes, that was Praise okay. the Sun. So, <laughs> um, I actually like doing this question block. I'm thinking we may keep this and incorporate it into the show more often. Yeah, I enjoyed it. You guys okay with that? We had yeah, pretty, uh, pretty awesome. solid questions from yeah, our Yeah, so keep those coming, so we guys. Uh, any of you that we didn't were unable to get to this week, put them in, and we'll be able to screen them and hopefully get to them in the future episodes. But that is all the time we have for this week. I want to thank you all for listening, and thank you for guys for being on the panel. The episode 20, that's a fantastic job. Congratulate every one of you for getting us this far, and to all of you for helping us get this far.
Don't forget, you can find us over at tsgg.online, where you can input those questions over on Twitter at the SoSGG and on YouTube, youtube.com slash the society. Patreon.com slash TSGG is where you can help us continue to make better content for you. Check out our many subscription levels and help us out if you can. If you can't, that's okay, too. We'll see you next week. See you all next time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.